So let's talk about HTTP. Remember in the previous one, we did a TCP connection, the TCP handshake, SIN, SIN, ACK, ACK, to port 80, and it just sat there. So let's finish that and make a proper connection to port 80. So here's a script that does a proper HTTP connection. And I'm just going to make this a little smaller. That'll probably do. All right, this should go here. So it's, whoops, this is going to be head.py. OK, nano head.py. And I want to move this down a bit. All right, put in this stuff. So there. So it imports the socket library. It sets my timeout to, to two seconds, defines my target URL of the server I'm talking to, and then it connects on port 80. After it connects, there is no banner, so instead of trying to read data from the server, I send more data. And that data is going to be this request. A head slash HTTP 1.1, then a carriage return and a line feed, then the name of the host, and then two carriage return line feeds. That is the simplest HTTP request that just asks for a banner from the server telling me what version of uh, server software it's using. And so I send that and print whatever comes back from that. So let's run this one. This is head.py. OK. And so it connects. And when the server, well, web server replies, it gives you a status code here. 200 OK means it understood your request and it's sending you the data you asked for. So here's the data. This is an HTTP header from my server that just shows what version of Apache I'm using and a few other things. So I now have got a proper HTTP requester. All right, so now let's try a more interesting um, case. Let me put this window all by itself there to make life simpler. So let's open this in another tab, say. Here's a login page. So I can log in with like A and B. And when I log in, it says login rejected. You sent A and B, and then you can log in again. All right. So let's take a look at the data that was used to send that. I'm going to use Wireshark, the famous network sniffer. And I'm going to get rid of this and sniff on any. So here's my Wireshark. And I've got a Wi-Fi adapter, and I also have a wired adapter, and I don't actually know which one it's using right now. Uh, I think I can turn off the Wi-Fi for what we're doing here. It should be defaulting to the wired. And yep, looks like it is. Good. So then I can use this adapter here. And I should see some traffic going through, which is good. So now I've got a filter for HTTP, which is unencrypted web traffic. And not very many pages use unencrypted web traffic anymore. So my browser just sits there, which is what I wanted. So now if I go back to this login page, and I try to log in as A and B, and log in, then I see the traffic here. That's what I wanted. So it sent a GET request to the server. So what I can do is right click on this and follow the TCP stream. And that will show me the data it sent to the server, which is up here. It's all the red stuff. And the font is pretty small. So I'm just going to copy that and put it in my Python. So I'll copy that out of here and then paste it into a file in Python. So let's, uh, let me check my instructions, see what name I'm going to use for this. Um, get.py. OK, let's copy head to get.py. All right. And now nano get.py. OK. And now. Here was my request. And I'm going to change that request to equal all that data I copied out of Wireshark, which is here. Now, let me make this window bigger. 
All right. So I have this multi-line string, and you can set a variable to a multi-line string in Python with triple quotes. So I can do this. And that will make this request variable equal to the whole story. The problem is this would work in older versions of Apache, but it won't work in a current version of Apache because it now really requires uh, carriage return and line feed. And this kind of line feed inside a multi-line string only gives you one of those two things. So to fix it, you're going to have to um, correct it. And let me, uh, there, I have to add a backslash r to each line, which is kind of annoying. It kind of undoes the con convenience of this, but that's what you have to do because the modern versions of Apache are pickier than the old versions were. So control e will take me to the end of a line, and I can give it the uh, carriage return it needs there. Whoops. Control e there we are, backslash r, backslash r, backslash R and uh, there, I'll make sure it's all fitting on the screen for the twitch, backslash R and backslash R. And I think one at the bottom is all I need. Yeah, okay, this looks pretty good. Let's see if that works. Now, I'm just going to scan through my code. So I define the socket, I define the target, I connect. Then I make this request object, and I see I've left an old line in here from head. I don't need that anymore. Now I define this multi-line request and send it and print what comes back. It looks pretty good. Let's see if it runs. Python 3. Uh, get. All right. Now. See what I have? I get a Unicode error. It got an unprintable character. So something is wrong, but it's actually not that my code is wrong. What's wrong is it returned zipped data. And by the way, we should be able to see that in Python. Or I mean in, yep, in here, in Wireshark. Yeah, I can't zoom in, unfortunately. So I'll use the uh, line here where I can zoom in. The point is, Look at what it actually gave me for a page. It didn't give me readable text. It gave me zipped content. And it does that because up here it says accept encoding gzip and deflate. So if you send a request and in the request you say I will allow you to zip the response, the server may choose to zip the response, which is what it did. And if I'm using a browser, it will unzip. But my Python does not currently include unzipping code. Now, I could add unzipping code to my Python, but that's too much bother. What I want to do is just tell it, don't send me zipped code. So I take this line, accept encoding, and just delete it. If I don't tell it that I will accept zipped code, it will not send me zipped code. So I remove that line, and now when I run it, now I get readable text. I get the HTML. So I sent it my username, and now I still don't have the right username and password, but now it tells me login rejected. At least I can read the answer. All right. Now I get a readable response. So let's try a post form, because almost, by the way, you're not supposed to use get for a login because it leaks secrets into things like internet favorites and, uh, and um, log files on the server. It's better to use post. And that's what this login form does. So let's get rid of the old one and try this one. And I'm going to capture it in Wireshark again to see what the request looks like. So I'm going to restart my capture and filter for HTTP again. All right. HTTP, I say. Enter. OK. And now I'm going to give it A and B and log in. Now I get a POST request, and I can right-click on that, follow TCP stream, and again I can see what it looks like here, and I'm going to go back to my um, 
instructions where I can zoom that in and make it bigger. So you see this is what a post request looks like. Up here it looks very much the same as a get request, but it has this content length line. And that then it has a blank line here, and at the end it has seven characters of data, u equals a and p equals b. That's the username and password. So this seven characters has to equal the seven characters you see there. And that is the structure of a post request. And the point is the data, instead of being right here in the URL, is stuck separately so it will be handled more securely on the server. So you can ma make a Python script that logs into this page with these parameters. You have username and password. And you, if you try to log in as Dumbo and Dumbo right here in the browser, it will accept it. Dumbo, the username is Dumbo and the password is Dumbo. And if you log in, it'll take it, but you don't get the flag because you came in through the browser and it knows you did that because it looks at the user agent here. And see, the user agent is Mozilla and all this garbage. But if you make your own Python script, you can adjust that user agent to be something else and you should change it to Python. And when you do, you'll get a flag. So that's a game. Then you can start making a brute force since you know how to make loops and you know how to read the response and see if you succeeded or not. You can now try all possible two digit numbers until you manage to log into this page. So that's a brute force attack. Then you can do basic authentication. There's a couple of tricks here. Basic authentication is an early internet technique to try to make it more secure where when you send credentials, instead of sending them in plain text like this, you would turn it into Base64. It's not very secure because Base64 is not encrypted. It's just encoding. But at least people can't just read it trivially. And so you can write a Python script that tries usernames and passwords in um, Base64 encoding to get in. And then there's one down here where you have to uh, log in again with basic authentication and try 100 possible passwords. And then I don't think I'll bother demonstrating it, but you can do all this with HTTPS. It's very much, now there's two differences here. The first thing is you won't be able to follow the stream in Wireshark anymore because it will be encrypted. And there used to be with, H, with TLS1, you could actually get the key and insert it into Wireshark and decrypt it, but you can't do that very effectively with modern versions of, uh, of TLS. So you have to use Firefox developer tools in your browser, and in the developer tools you can see the raw requests if you turn them on, and it tells you here how to do that. So you can still get the information you need for an HTTPS page, but to make those scripts you use requests. The requests library instead of raw sockets is the easiest way to send HTTPS requests. So there's a few more uh, logins to perform and brute force searches here to find some flags. So I'm going to stop this one.